Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new series. This, as you probably saw by the title, is gonna be a return to Bloodborne. We are going back to Bloodborne, I'm gonna be playing through the game again. Seeing how it is, I'm really looking forward to it, because I've been itching to play some Bloodborne. So I already created my character, I named her Yuria, because Yuria is a badass, thought I would honor her, and... I guess she kind of looks like a teacher, but that's okay. I think it's because of the glasses, but the choice of glasses is pretty limited in this game. I went with the milk toast origin because I'm going to be explaining the build I'm going to be going for in a little bit, but I decided to go for the milk toast origin. Now, this playthrough is going to be a complete playthrough of the game. I'm not sure if I'll do all the bosses, but definitely do all the main the main game stuff old hunters and yeah any optional stuff i feel like doing it's going to be fun And I am going to be watching the cutscenes because I love the lore of this game. And to be honest, I've only played through this game three times. So I want to kind of, again, explore it and see what else I can discover with the lore and everything. So obviously by the start of that, uh, the whole intro thing, um, obviously I think that Bloody Wolf that appears kind of signifies the, uh, the fact that eventually the Yarnum blood is going to turn you, uh, which one is this? Yeah, there we go. There we go, much better. Uh, that the Yarnum blood eventually turns people into beasts. Of course, that doesn't happen to us. And by then I can assume uh, that hunters are special. Obviously, we see throughout the game that not everyone gets into the hunter's nightmare. Or, I mean, the hunter's dream. So, hunters are probably special in some way. Now, in what way, that's never re never really explained, I think. But, again, hunters are not ordinary people. I think that's why the doll says you found yourself a hunter, too. I think I already missed some blood vials at the start. Okay, so about this build and what I'm going to be going for. I want to make, make kind of a blood tinge type of build. So, the weapon I'm going for, in terms of firearms, is currently looking to be the Gatling gun. I mean, I wanted to use the Gatling gun when I first played the old Hunters. I just didn't have the stats for it, so I thought I would get the stats for the Gatling gun because it looks cool as shit. Who wouldn't want to go around Bloodborne with a Gatling gun? shooting up shit, so that's the firearm I'm gonna be going for 
I will need some Blood Tinge for that thing to actually deal some damage. So we're going to be going for Blood Tinge as well as Strength because the cannon, not, not the cannon, the Gatling gun does need, I think, 28 Strength. For my main weapon, I am... Oh, hey there. I forgot you come up to the top. Oh, this guy isn't actually that difficult to kill. Oh, yeah. That's not how you do a backstab in this game. This is how you do a backstab in this game. Um, where was I? Oh, as for my main weapon, I think I'm going to be going for the Beast Cutter, which is also an old hunter's weapon. That's the thing that's basically the equivalent of the Threaded Cane. And I will be able to get that weapon pretty quickly because it is possible to run into the Hunter's Dream even if you're underleveled and just pick it up. Now the Gatling Gun is going to be a little bit more challenging. I'll probably need to be pretty far into the game to be able to pick that thing up. Because the Old Hunter's is a high level area, as you know. Okay. And there's probably going to be some mistakes that I'll make at the start here because I'll need to readjust to good old Bloodborne. So I think we'll go for the Sock Lever. Um, well, I could go for the Threaded Cane. Technically, it is the weapon we'd be going for. Or like the... Well, like I said, the Beast Cutter is the equivalent of the Threaded Cane. So you know what? We'll go for the Cane. And I think we'll go for the Hunter Pistol, because this one is better suited if you want Blood Tinge. Oh yeah, this... Of course, the fucking inventory has to be different in every Souls game, or Soulsborne game. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk to German. If I, keep, I keep activating the messages and the, uh, the things, the Blood Echoes. So I'm going to be keep skipping most of these dialogues because this is the part of the, doll, the the lore I'm familiar with. So, oh, that was accidental. Plus, it doesn't really say anything too interesting. Later, later he'll say some pretty fascinating things. Anyways, we got to return to the... Uh, the what you call it, the clinic. Because again... I think I forgot some of my blood vials. So in terms of how long this series is going to take, I don't actually know. Like, Bloodborne is not the longest Souls game, but with the old Hunters, I don't know. Again, I haven't played this game in quite a while. Probably since Old Hunters, which came out, I think last, was, was it last September? God, has it been a year since I played Bloodborne, really? No, I think I've, I must have played it since then. Because I remember, like, I think... I don't know, it might have been. Anyways, the only reason I don't think it's going to be that difficult to readjust is because, to be honest, this game is pretty similar to... Wait, did I not miss any blood vials? Huh. I honestly remember there being more at the start. Whatever. We killed the wolf. That's about it. Again, it's not going to be that difficult to readjust. Because this game, I would say, combat-wise, is actually pretty similar to Dark Souls 3. With how quick it is. It's still... I mean, Dark Souls 3 is still slower than this game. But with just kind of how you approach things... You know, lots of dodges, pretty much staying on the offense most of the time, which I like. Plus, you gotta admit, the threaded cane looks... Oh, yeah, I already picked this up. The threaded cane looks pretty badass. It's definitely the coolest looking starting weapon, I think. I mean, the saw cleaver is the most practical, and I think the hunter's axe is the most powerful. But if you want style... 
You gotta go with threaded cane. So yeah, he's not doing too well. So yeah, the healing church, oh. So the thing is, that's where we're essentially going. Uh, that, that right there is the cathedral ward. Um, of course, the interesting thing is that, honestly, out of all the Souls games, you probably covered the, the least amount of ground in Bloodborne. Like, to be honest, this game is very self-contained. You don't really go too far outside of the city, except, you know, to Bergenworth. Uh, not counting the nightmare stuff, of course. But, the game itself still manages to feel unique with the areas, you know. And that's the one thing I like about, the one, well, not the one thing, but something I really like about this game is the environment i think because of its different art style you know because of its it's more gothic kind of victorian setting it feels constantly fresh you know because even like dark souls 3 you still kind of have the usual souls game areas you know you have the castle um fortresses towns and everything but Bloodborne, because of its, well, I guess, like, time period, um, it just feels different to anything else in the series. Still, first thing we're going to be doing is making our way to the Cathedral Ward. Yeah, no one is too happy to see us, which I'll talk to them for now because, well, they're eventually gonna all die. So we might as well ha get some conversation in here. Again, just like Gilbert said, no one is really a fan of you here in Yarnum. Okay. I gotta get my bearings straight because the thing that happens is that I tend to get overconfident when I go and revisit games like this. So I'll take myself more skilled because I'm still in the mode where, you know, I'm still in the, that mode where I just beat the Orphan of Cause. But that was a year ago. So I am gonna kind of try and contain myself. In terms of the ending, uh, the thing, I'm always conflicted, you know, when I play Bloodborne with the ending, because if you guys don't know, I still have not managed to unlock the Yarnum Sunrise ending, which does carry its own achievement and kind of its own separate, it is its own separate ending, um, and it's not like a bad ending or anything. The only problem is that you miss out on the final boss, 
You miss out on German. So I'm always kind of conflicted on whether I should go for that um, ending, especially on a playthrough, because then the fucking what's his name, um, Murgo's wet nurse would be the final boss, which is kind of underwhelming. But I don't know. Maybe we could consider the orphan of cause. I don't know. Would you guys mind a lot if I went for the Yarnum Sunrise ending? Because first of all, I want that achievement. Um, and second of all, I want to see it because I've only ever seen it on YouTube. I don't know. I'll let you guys decide. If you don't mind it, we'll go for Yarnum Sunrise. If you guys want to see German and the Moon Presence, we'll go for one of the other ones. Because technically, when you think about it, the Yarnum Sunrise one is the only happy ending in the game. Where your character doesn't end up in a shitty situation. So who knows? Again, I'll leave it up to you guys in the comments. So far we're not doing terribly, although this is like... Oh shit. I say that and, and I'm about to die. Um, but this is kind of still baby steps here in this game. Ouch. You know what? I can do the same thing. So yeah, my gun isn't actually dealing terrible damage. There you are. Oh, and here we go. The number one thing I hate about Bloodborne, the fucking dogs. See, the thing is, dogs are terrible in every Souls game. But... This is a Souls game where you don't have a shield, so it's like extra annoying having to fight the dogs. Because usually what I would do is like block and just counter attack and kill them. Of course, not possible here, so the dogs are pretty much my most hated enemy, which I think everybody who's ever played this game hates them. Let's talk to you as well. I don't reckon you're from around here. No, I'm not. Well, you know what? We'll see. We'll see who survives longer because I have a feeling it's gonna be me. So I'll go do the fu full circle, um, unlock the shortcut, and then we can get a move on. I will be going for the armor, and well, not the armor. Cause th there isn't really armor in this game, technically. The other set, the the normal hunter set, because I want to wear something different. This starting set looks kind of, well, plain, which I guess it's supposed to, but, you know, still, you want to at least wear something interesting. That's the thing about that I really like about Bloodborne, because there is no, like, weight limit in this game. There's no worrying, no, like, you don't have to worry about your... You know, not using an item because it would overburden you or something. You can focus 100% on fashion in this game. And i that's a thing that I really like. Now, if I remember it correctly... Yep, this is a trap. I gotta find the torch. Well, this is an interesting message. When the hunt began, the healing church left us, blocking the great bridge to Cathedral Ward as old Yarnum burned to the ground that moonlit night. So basically, I think lore-wise, the burning of old Yarnum is, I think, what, that, that was the final straw that really turned Yarnum to shit. Because... It's implied that there were always tensions between the healing church and the populace. But I think when they decided to burn down an entire district, that kind of really pissed people off. And that's why the healing church blocked themselves off in their own kind of little district. I'm not sure if I can take on these werewolves, to be honest with you. You know what? We'll go the other way. Although we end up in the same place, but still... 
No, we're not gonna go down there. Now, of course, this game, like all of the Souls games, isn't perfect either. And there are some things that I dislike about Bloodborne. The main thing is its linearity. Um, this is probably... This, along with Dark Souls 3, is the most linear Souls games. And when I say Souls games, I mean the whole series. Like, aside from taking like different paths throughout the actual level, there aren't really many places where you can take divergent paths. You know, like, in Dark Souls, you can choose which of the four lords you're going to take on first. Is there no way back? Shit. Yeah, there is no way back. Well, okay. We're gonna take the whole way around then. Again, don't really want to deal with the werewolves. Not really. Um, oh, I, thought, I, I didn't say anything because I thought you have to answer her straight away, but I guess not. She's pissed at us as well, but we'll be able to do some things with her. She does have a quest line, sort of. Now, let's go ahead and visit our first NPC in a bit. I'll cut down all this shit later. But yeah, let's do this first. What's her name? I always forget. A hunter, are you? And an outsider. What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights. Here. To welcome the new hunter. Of course, oh. for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh hungry beasts now. The thing that always struck me about her is that she sounds like the wildlings from Game of Thrones. What is her name? What are you saying? A hunt? I, I keep forgetting. Well, not keep forgetting, I actually just straight up forgot. But she just gave us a badass gesture, which... We'll trade out the... Rally, I guess. Perfect way to end off a boss fight. Especially if you have like an actual... Oh, you just fell down. Oh yeah, fall damage is non-existent in this game either. And that's what killed me. Damn it. I survived a huge ass, like a two-story fall. And a fucking rat claws at me and I die. Well, it looks like we're gonna be getting to our blood echoes. That's gonna be the main goal here. Oh, it, this is where it warps us. Fuck. Kind of not the best place to end up at. Um, I'll go and activate the lamp up there. Or rest at it or whatever. I think, like... Quote-unquote resting at it is enough to... Um, leave it as your last checkpoint. Again, these like little gameplay mechanics are the things that I tend to forget. I don't know, was that enough? One of the other issues about Bloodborne is the load times. Uh, the way the game is constructed, uh, you pretty much have to return to the Hunter's Dream for everything. Oops, fuck. How do you switch weapons? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Few control issues. I just used um, a blood echo or blood vial. 
while trying to switch weapon stances. It's gonna happen probably a few times here at the start. But the thing is, like, you have to return to the Hunter's Dream for everything. And I don't know if this is caused by the fact that this is kind of an earlier PS4 game. But, well, not, well, technically it's not really, really an early PS4 game. But, it's the firm, first FromSoft game on PS4. So the load times are kind of long. Uh, that's a common criticism people have for this game. And it does become an issue, especially, like I said, because in some places, you know, if you want a quick travel, you just have to warp around a lot. You're constantly going back to the Hunter's Dream and back to the areas, and it can get pretty tedious after a while. So let's see if we can do this without screwing up. The first prior priority is not to get killed. So I think what we'll do is... Hmm. My blood echoes are probably on the enemy. Oh, is there no way back from here either? Shit. Oh no, that's what... Okay. I almost missed my blood echoes. I honestly thought that it would be on the rat. But I guess not. I'm actually really happy about that. Gonna make things a lot easier. And that fucker keeps shooting us. So essentially this weapon... I should not have done that because... These guys usually drop blood vials. That's gonna be an annoyance getting to him. I should use my gun more. Again, my blood tinge is decent, so I will be able to deal damage with my gun. Let's try and parry. This might get my ass killed, but let's see if I can do it. Nice. And I didn't get the critical. Of course that would happen. That was a trade, which I'll take. Okay, we're not doing terribly in terms of like the parrying and everything. Maybe I'm not as rusty as I thought I would be. I'll avoid jumping down there because it's just too much of a risk. Aside from the dogs, the rats are annoying enemy number two. Okay, let's kill... You. Good thing is that criticals restore all your... Um, I don't know what to call it. Like, gray life. That's what it's called in Street Fighter when you block something and you take chip damage. It's essentially the same concept. Like, the gray life stays, and eventually it's gonna recover, but if you get hit again, you lose it all. So I'm gonna call it gray life from now on. Damn, we're already 30 minutes in, almost. But we made okay progress. I mean, that one death aside. Of course, things are gonna get much more difficult. But again, hopefully with Dark Souls 3 as kind of a similar experience, I won't be as rusty. Because let me tell you, coming from Dark Souls 2 to this game was a huge, huge shift. That glow looked like there was an item there, but there's not. All right. Uh, this will lead back to those rats, I think. And this is... Oh, it's just one of the guys that dropped down. That's fine. I think there is... I know there is an inside skull 
somewhere. I thought <laughs> that was an enemy for a second. I think it's below us. We'll get to that thing later. Because then we can go ahead and start leveling up without having to fight the first boss. Which is always an advantage. Oh no, it's right here. Yeah. Oh, you're still alive? I'm not going to be able to hit him, am I? I guess enemies take no fall damage either. Yeah, madman's knowledge. Inside skull, in other words. So again, once we pop that, which I'm just going to do, I'm going to screw up that inventory a lot, aren't I? Oh, where's the ladder? Hold on. Oh, there it is. I was like, am I really that dumb? But no, I just missed it. So I think what I'm going to do is go down there. There's a weapon to pick up. And then we'll call it for this first episode. As always with my series, I'm going to be going for like the 30 to 35. Well, actually, no, I, I never really go up to 35. But, you know, like the 30 minute uh, mark for each episode. I think that's usually a good amount of... We can get a good amount of things done in 30 minutes. Now he's actually dead. Thank you. So we got the saw cleaver, which is an okay weapon. I might as well pick up the things on the other side. Because why not? There we go. If I remember correctly, there isn't actually anything that super useful down here. Aside from the saw... No, that's actually the saw spear, not the saw cleaver. Same difference. I mean, that's a very similar weapon, those two. Only there, I think their transformed state is different. The blood vials and the bloodstone shard. Actually, that was useful. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end the first episode of Return to Bloodborne here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think this is going to be a fun playthrough. This character will turn out well. And yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.